because I'm really passionate about evaluating services well um, and it's really hard to do well and I love that other people work on this um, I'm a freelance research and evaluator and I tend to help people at the shaping um, stage and I think what's been really interesting over the last 10 years is to see the shift towards digital services which I love working on but actually evaluation's a little bit further behind I think we're playing catch up um, so I'm just going to talk to you a bit about some principles which I think are important um, whether you're designing or delivering an evaluation yourself or if you're commissioning evaluation and like right at the start of when you're thinking how are we going to develop this service um, so yeah I think that's the first big secret is that you're not missing anything no one is particularly amazing at this um, it was great uh, to hear from Kylie just now because actually a lot of what she talked about resonate with some of the things I'm gonna uh, say as well. Um, we're all trying to figure out the best way to use these different methods of delivering digital and the different types of data we have. And we're all new to this. Um, and I think there's two reasons why we're playing catch up. Uh, the first is we just evaluators like myself, we didn't train in digital, we trained in social research. <laughs> we, we didn't learn about analytics until a year or so ago. And even then we're still not quite up to speed on them. Uh, we, we're kind of picking up new skills as well. We weren't digital by default by any stretch of the imagination. And also the purpose of evaluation just hasn't really changed. Um, so there's lots of clever ways to use um, data just like Kylie shared and I'm sure the next speaker will as well to inform how you de develop and deliver your services but actually a lot of the reasons why some of us will evaluate our services are still for funders or to get funding or to use an impact reports towards trustees and that means that we still have to kind of bring two different worlds together when we're thinking about digital evaluation. Um, so I made up some principles which I kind of have and always in the back of my mind um, just based on being involved in a lot of digital service development and research um, which I'll talk to you now so these aren't principles that are published on a website or I can share a fancy report to or that anyone's validated these are just things I think um, and the first is what really annoys me about trying to apply traditional evaluation methods to digital services is start with what your service actually does and I say that for a really important reason um, and, and go back to your theory of change later. The problem is when we design an evaluation, typically we tend to start with our theory of change. Why did we do it? What's our theory? And what are the outcomes we're trying to create? And that can tie us in a lot of knots when we're evaluating a digital service. So we might be trying to um, improve someone's mental health or make them feel safer or calmer, but actually the digital service is often a bit of a step below that. It might be helping someone find the advice they need at that moment in time or it might be trying to prepare for a doctor's appointment and I think theory of change often gets us very confused with lots of grand big language that then get us kind of trying to ask people lots of questions that don't feel very relevant when they're using a very specific digital service which will often do one thing very well rather than take them the whole journey so always start with what the uh, actual service does and for those of you who and new to evaluation, um, which I'm also finding a lot, a lot of charities are not only developing digital services for the first time, they're doing evaluation for the first time. It would actually really help um, to learn about traditional evaluation approaches. I've got some links I can share in the chat, um, but understanding a bit more about theory of change, development, setting outcomes, designing good surveys, designing good interviews. These are also really relevant things to learn about so that you can then put them to one side and work out how to do your own digital service evaluation well. Um, and the best place to go are the MPC's website, Inspiring Impact, NCBO has lots of resources that you can learn about all of those things. The other th principle I really like to think about when doing an evaluation, which is slightly different when it's a digital service, is it's it's a patchwork job. It's a make, do and mend piece. I think when we have a face-to-face -face service and it's all very planned and 
we know exactly who's going to be coming or the types of people that will be coming, the types of services they'll get, how that session will pan out, we'll be able to have that contact with them. You can then add a layer on top where you say, right, this is our evaluation, we'll deliver it in these ways, these are our methods, this is exactly who will respond, this is kind of what they'll say and how we'll analyze the data. With digital evaluation, you might not ever meet that person. You might not know how many times I've interacted with you. There's just a lot of anonymity around it. Um, you just, you have to do things like figure out how to use a bit of Google Analytics and a, a bit of a pop-up survey and some ratings on some pages and you sort of put it together in this patchwork job. So I think the skill in a good digital evaluation is being confident with that lack of certainty. Um, and it will feel like a lack of a plan, but actually, if you have thought about it, that is really the only key to success. Um, and what other examples did I have? I'll come back to those points later. I think my third principle is that good evaluation design should really be thought about in the same way as good service design. So the other big mistake we can all make, and I, I'm really guilty of this, I really don't, please don't look back at any of my old surveys. Um, when we do an evaluation, we still like to add it onto the end of things. So we want someone to like finish using a tool or a session and we want them to fill in our survey and our survey will be horrible <laughs> because it will be long and have lots of categories and not open well on mobile and um, detract from what people are trying to do, which is move on with their lives or get on to the next task. Um, so actually there's a lot that you can learn from thinking about what are the principles of good service design. And I quite like to go old school on this and look at the GDS principles. And there's some that I think really resonate with good evaluation. One of which is do less. So a good digital evaluation does as little as possible. It's really tempting, especially as soon as you have something like a survey, which is really amenable to a digital format to then ask lots and lots and lots of questions but actually the less you can ask the better. Um, and I think the best example I had of this recently was I was working with some of the Catalyst team on the service um, recipes and we were talking about evaluation. I was like, I think we need to ask like, we'll keep it really simple. We'll just ask three questions. People can say, you know, what, what did they find helpful? What didn't they like? What could they improve? And then they came back to me and challenged me and they said, we're just gonna say, do you have any feedback? What is it? <laughs> which blew my mind I was like oh okay you have clever the digital people so they had clever ways they could analyze that data I was like what do you mean you're not going to code it and ask it in these three different ways um but it and they have managed to use that so doing less and um, can be really valuable and doing the hard work to make it simple um I really can't uh, it's really easy to criticize surveys I've got there's one that's open at the moment that was going around that I looked at last night and I'm not going to share it because it's too mean um but there's <laughs> a charity doing a survey of their services right now and I read it and there's just there's a hundred different categories and a hundred different ratings and I don't know if you've ever heard of a Likert scale when you have strongly agree to strongly disagree there's five points for every single question and 20 different categories for each and it just it's a nightmare for people to fill in and actually, I think a skill in terms of designing an evaluation, whether you're doing it or whether someone else in your team is doing it or whether you've paid a fancy consultant or an average consultant like myself to do it is just to be really, really confident to go to them and say, no, I'm not asking these questions or that's wrong or why, like, ask why, like really ask why for every single thing, how we need it, why are we asking it? Do we need this many categories? And actually, if you do sign up to any of the tools like SurveyMonkey, for example, like that gives you really useful guidance and says like they've actually done studies like and it will flag up which questions you've done wrong. Like you've got 20 different questions, subcategories within this question. Is that really the right way to get everyone to complete it? Um, and things like could you choose three responses instead of five? Like these are all really important because as much as you can get bogged down in the inane detail of it all, it really affects people's experience of completing it. And I think that's the other, I've lost the list of principles now, I should have them memorized somewhere. But the other thing is really think about the context. That's really important with digital evaluation, like the context in which people are completing a task for you, whether it's upvoting a page or filling in a survey, taking part in an interview. It's really, really important that you're not then pissing them off <laughs> for want of a better word, or maybe your service, 
has some issues when it, in itself, you know, nothing's perfect first time. If there's a dead end in your service and people can't get what they want and then they see an evaluation survey or a way to get in touch with you, then you get all these queries being like, you know, help me, like, I need this like, information now. Uh, I had that a few times or, you know, this is really annoying. I want to complain. And so you need to make sure there's no dead ends. Like people can't just come through an evaluation route as a way to get to your organization. And that needs to be thought about in your service design as well as your evaluation design. Um, and I think, and it just, it annoys people if they're getting asked questions about services they haven't had. <laughs> and so if you're saying, you know, has this improved your mental health? And you're like, well, all I did was go on here to look up some information for a friend. Why would it improve my mental health? You have to kind of think about all the different kind of variations and formats. Um, so any piloting you can do or any testing will be really helpful. And if you could um, do any kind of qualitative research with the people who use the service before doing any mass kind of questioning of people or lots of interviews, that will really, really help as well. Just because how people talk about why things are valuable to them are often quite different to how evaluators like to ask questions about why it's important to them. So it will really... Um, kind of improve the success rate of any evaluation that you do. And the other thing that's really important is it's very easy in a digital context to think, actually, we'll just ask everyone. Let's ask everyone everything we want to know. And you've actually got an opportunity here to be quite clever. So could you just ask a sample of 5% of people all of your questions or could you divide it up and just ask some cohorts some questions or some or other or could you just do it for three weeks rather than the whole year um, those can all be really valid approaches of doing evaluation to help you learn is my service effective are people finding the information they need is it kind of helping them do what we hoped it would do and to wrap up i think my top advice would be question your funders. <laughs> if you're doing an evaluation for a funder, basically, or to get funding, and you know that they're particularly interested in understanding certain outcomes, like really go back to them. Um, I worked with a charity recently who had received a large grant from a very well-known funder as part of a program that had stipulated certain outcomes and they had a program evaluation and they'd been asked to capture all this information about the people they worked with. And they were going to build this into an app that people went on to get basic articles and guidance about going to school um, and about, you know, teenage worries. And then they were being asked to kind of evaluate, to kind of respond to questions like, are you going to A&E? And do you feel part of a community? And actually having the confidence to go back to your funders and be like, this is just, this is just not relevant. It might be for the kind of counselling services or face-to-face -face work that you funded, but it's not here. Like that's really helpful to know that you can do and, um, and you can push back on that. And question your evaluators because they won't know what you know. <laughs> they won't know about the design. They won't know about the users. Um, they just know about good evaluation, but actually they might also not know about good digital practice because it's quite rare to find someone who can do both. So question your evaluators. They'll appreciate it long-term and question yourself <laughs> just because you're excited and want to know everything about your service doesn't mean you should <laughs> or you can um and i think that's it really and so in summary i think you actually don't really need to be an, a good expert digital evaluator to do this well you just need to be very thoughtful and put a bit of time get everyone who's excited about pushing out um digital services and products and getting on with it like encouraging everyone to pause is probably another big challenge you need to overcome but really having time to think about what you're doing and how you're doing it will really help